I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about how to hook up a classic floppy, internal floppy disk drive to a, a modern day motherboard which does not have a uh, built in floppy disk controller that uses this interface cable right here. So here we're looking at this USB to internal floppy disk drive converter. It's just a little add-on board that on one side has the interface to plug into the internal floppy disk drive and on the other side it has a USB connection as well as a power connection which you actually use to power the floppy disk, the floppy disk drive. So the floppy disk drive is actually powered via USB power. The one thing I can't stand about these controllers and which I mean they're nice um, and they've actually come down in price. Um, I picked this one up on Amazon for like roughly ten dollars so or ten dollars or less um, but the thing that this aggravates this, this really aggravates me is instead of in, installing the proper internal USB header cable that plugs into your motherboard's USB header. They instead install this external, typical, you know, USB-A cable. That would be convenient if you were, uh, I guess, if your if your uh, PC had USB ports inside of it. But most computers don't, so I don't understand the whole logic behind this. So um, there'll be two steps in this process. The first step is we're going to have to um, desolder this cable and replace it with the proper internal USB header cable and then we'll be installing this onto the floppy disk drive and plugging it up to the motherboard. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is peel off this hot glue they use as a stress relief. That way I can desolder what's well, actually like silicone, but anyway, peel this off. That way we can desolder this. And what's interesting is um, you couldn't you could in fact install a header on here. Um, you may be able to see right there you could actually install a header and one thing I can say right away is even if you do in, <laughs> even if you do decide to go the internal USB or excuse me even if you do decide to use the existing cable you may end up having to fix stuff anyway because I uh, look here you can see right there we got a bridge between ground in between ground and one of the data connections which is not good um, so I'll definitely be vo I'm voicing my opinions on the Amazon review I will I already will be voicing my opinions about this cable in general but um, the fact that we're having to make repairs regardless of the fact is it's just not not good um, so I mean, these this the device itself actually will work decently. Um, after all is said and done, but um, yeah, this right here, that's just not very good. We're gonna heat up the soldering iron and. Uh, Went to go ahead and get this desoldered off here, get it out of the way. So that way we can install the proper um, cable 
Now, personally, if I had an additional um, internal cable that had this connection on both ends, then I could install a header on this and just plug it right in. But um, it all depends on what you have, really. So at least one of these came right out, so um, what I have to do is uh, just like one by one take these out. Now that's all clear, just gotta clean up the holes a little bit, get the solder out of them. And for that, we're going to use the solder sucker. That is that we can suck the uh, solder right out of the hole. I'm going to disconnect this cable here. That way we don't damage it. If I accidentally hit it with a solder and iron. Yeah, I should mention I had to do the same thing last time I got one of these. Had to change out the cable. So really, they, they really should not be using that style cable on this. I can tell the cable is really an afterthought. To be honest, use this. Try using the soldering wick here as well. Okay, so I put the board into the vise. Try to make matters a little bit easier here. Okay, so now we got the holes cleared out. Then we go ahead and begin soldering the replacement cable on once we get it prepped. Okay, everybody, so I've went ahead and prepped these wires. Um, I took this uh, header cable out of its original shielded sleeve because, um, well, for one, I had to shorten it down, and when I tried to pull the extra wires out, it just, you know, this, uh, well, had all this with it too. So I just went ahead and took that out. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and attach these wires to the circuit board. So I've already, went, as I've mentioned, I went, went through the process of prepping the wires. I've uh, I stripped them and I tinned them. And we're going to go and attach it to the uh, PCB. So what I gotta do is install this back in here. And it's gotta make sure that I follow the correct pin out. So of course red is on the far left. Stick it through and give her a little bend to try to lock it in place. Keyword is try. <sighs> and our next cable will be the white cable or the white wire. These are going to be a little more tricky to 
uh, keep in place, I think. They're going to be the ones that are uh, be more likely to pop out. You see, it just came right out there. So, what I'm going to do is uh, turn this up, I guess, toward its side a little bit. And uh, that way I can sort of access both sides at the same time. I'm going to get this first wire secured into place. Don't need a whole, whole lot of solder here. Okay, that one's in. So now we'll attempt to get that green wire to stay in place. Or the white wire, excuse me. Because it's actually um, red, white, green, black. So now that I've gotten one of the wires fastened into place, I think it'll make it a little easier to get the rest of them to go in. Of course, they may not look the prettiest, but uh, the key thing is to make sure that we don't have touching wires. I just have to preload the solder and iron with some solder for this one. Because I'm going to use one hand to hold the wire while I solder it in. Okay, so now the white wire is in. Next we'll do green. We still got some solder loaded onto the iron. Get a little more solder on here. As you mentioned, if you're not very experienced with soldering, um, perhaps you should go with the uh, the alternative method, which will be to install an internal USB port inside the computer using a, an adapter, and I'll look for said adapter. On Amazon, I put a link in the description. Last but not least, the black wire, which is our ground. Since it's a power wire, it went through a lot. Well, I should say that since it's a power wire, it's staying put kind of on its own. It's a little thicker than the rest, or at least uh, the uh, two data wires. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll just double check everything. So I, um, I saw these in through the bottom. The key thing is making sure that none of these were touching. So now I got this piece of heat shrink tubing on here to act as sort of a stress relief get there as close as I can it's right about there and I'll use the solder and iron to uh, shrink it down Okay, so next I'm going to apply some hot glue to that to uh, act as a uh, strain relief. Okay, so now I've uh, got this glued on here for extra uh, strain relief. So now it's ready to be installed into the uh, computer. Okay, so here's the computer that we're working on. This is a little project I'm doing. The uh, motherboard that's in this machine does not have a floppy disk controller. So 
so right down there straight ahead let me zoom in Right down there on the motherboard is the USB header. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this in to that. And then I'm gonna attach that to the floppy disk drive. Okay, so I had to swap out the floppy disk drive for one that would work in this machine because um, the uh, floppy disk ribbon connection was on the far left of the other drive which was now being blocked by the CPU fan but we got it swapped out so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and plug in this little guy plug it in uh, actually take that back first we're actually going to plug in the cable to this little um, PCB just pops on there like that and now we can go ahead and um, plug this into the floppy disk drive which is a very tight connection or tight space in this chassis but uh, we have just enough room to get it in there Now that's in, we'll go ahead and plug in the power connection to the floppy drive, which is directly above where the ribbon cable normally gets plugged in. Okay. So now we got our floppy disk drive hooked up to the USB connection on the motherboard. So now it's really just a matter of uh, um, going into Windows and seeing if it works. Because, I mean, there's, you don't have to install any drivers. It's just pretty much drivers will install by themselves. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Okay, now we got our floppy disk drive installed with the um, USB to floppy adapter. First thing we'll do is I'll show you in Device Manager what it looks like. So, go into Device Manager. You can see right there floppy disk drives. You got this Teak USB UF000X USB device. That's the USB to floppy drive adapter and I got a floppy disk inserted so it's going to pull up File Explorer go to this PC and floppy disk drive A and there's our test file it says hello this is a test file to show that the floppy drive is working and that this floppy disk is readable so anyways, uh, that is the process of getting a uh, floppy disk drive to work with a newer motherboard that does not have a native floppy disk controller built in. You, you can use this little adapter and you can preserve the uh, use of that old 3.5 inch floppy disk drive. And I should mention that this adapter only works with 3.5 inch drives. It, the uh, 3.5 inch drives, 1.44 megabyte drives. It does not work with other types of drives, and it does not work with the old five and a quarter inch drives either. So, just three and a half inch, 1.44 megabyte floppy disk drives. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to your channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. 
Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, CubeComp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support and thanks for watching this video.